Hello everyone, I'm, I'm George from Ireland. So here I am outside St Albans Cathedral in St Albans, United Kingdom. Um, so this is, uh, as you'll see, the cathedral with the longest nave of any English cathedral. Um, and very fine structure it is. But what we're seeing here is, is a 19th century rebuilding of uh, this main door, the, the, the west door. Um, because the, the altar faces to the east, as in towards Jerusalem. So all altars in this, this part of the world face towards um, the east. Um, anyway, so it's built at the supposed site of the martyrdom of St. Albans, who was a local man. In the 3rd or possibly the 4th century AD, um, a, a Christian priest was found by the Roman authorities when the Christians were severely persecuted. And um, so this, this priest, Amphibalus, if I got his name right, he requested a sanctuary from um, Alban, and Alban was not a Christian himself. His name in Latin, white in Latin. I don't know if he was a Romanized Briton or whatever, but he said, yes, he, I'll shelter you in my house for a few days. Then the Roman authorities got wind that this um, uh, Christian was there. They came to arrest the priest, so St. Alban, he swapped his clothes with the, with the priest, and the priest was able to make good his escape, and St. Alban offered himself for arrest, and they assumed that he was the priest. I think they then discovered Alban's real identity and said, well, you obviously helped Christians escape, so therefore you shall be punished with death. And so he crossed over a river, believed to be the river Ver, V-E-R, which is down at the bottom of that uh, hill. Um, and uh, they walked 500 paces up the hill to this spot um, where he said he was thirsty and by a miracle a well sprang up so he was able to slake his thirst and then he submitted himself to martyrdom. But and as soon as he died, the executioner's eyes supposedly fell out. Anyway, on the site of his martyrdom, this uh, cathedral was built. I can't believe it was a fairly warm and almost sunny day and now it's snowing. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll go further away I'll, and then you'll have an idea of the dimensions of it. So um, it's, it's 135 meters long the whole building and the nave is, is it 85 meters, something like that. So it's big, but it's been extensively rebuilt several times. So it's thought to the first building on the site is thought to be from the 8th century AD. And how do they know this is the exact spot where he was killed? We don't really. Maybe there was some spring there. Perhaps there's back formation making up the story to explain the spring being at the top of a hill. Um, so the Anglo-Saxons built it, the Normans extensively rebuilt it, and I don't know that much about the architecture. So you can see several levels of stonework, much of it's flint, which is which is quarried locally. And then you see the main tower there, you can just about behind it see the Union flag flapping. It'll be at half mast because it's only um, two days ago that His Royal Highness um, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, was called to God's mercy. So there was a huge abbey built in the Middle Ages, and really everything we can see was enclosed by the abbey. There were several buildings, and it stretched most of the way down to the River Burr. Um, so it was huge. It was probably the largest monastic centre in this realm. Um, and Nicholas Breakspear, who later became the Pope here in the fourth, he spent some time here, a local boy. He was educated locally, possibly at St Albans School, so it was just over there. It's often com commonly many monks, there was a convent for nuns close by as well. Um, but uh, so that uh, Nicholas Breakspear, he wanted to be a full monk of this abbey, but he wasn't accepted. He went off elsewhere. But as I said, that didn't stop him being made the Bishop of Rome. So uh, anyway, 1539 came along, the dissolution of the monasteries. Sir Thomas Cromwell got his way. Now, the financial situation of the abbey was not good by this stage. Um, there was some dissipation and uh, they were all heavily in debt. So then it was... Um, then, then it was uh, um, suppressed, the monks were sent away, they were laicized, just told to be laymen, the property was sequestrated by the crown, sold off, rented out, it was just to raise money for Henry VIII because of his profligacy. Um, so that was the end of this glorious um, a period of perhaps 800 years of monastic life here, and obviously it was, it was the centre of the community, it provided education, welfare and so forth. Here is another angle of St Albans Cathedral. Uh, well, with the naked eye, I can see the flag flying. For some reason, it's just too bright. You're not able to see it. Okay, so seeing a bit more of St Albans Cathedral and that main uh, bell tower. I'm never sure the difference between a belfry and a campanile. 
So uh, anyway, usually it's open to tourists. I've been in there and I've worshipped in St Albans Abbey on divers or sundry occasions. So the boys of St Albans um, School, or indeed the girls in sixth form, they go in there for weekly worship, well, daily worship. It's a day school only. But um, if there, there's also the BLR assembly, big lecture room assembly, for non-Christians who can go to something else. Look, the deanery offices. Now, the bishop had his palace somewhere here. I later had the grave misfortune to know a grandson of the Bishop of St Albans, um, who was a, always poignarding me in the back. But anyway, when he was a little boy, he had been in the garden of the bishop's palace because obviously his grandfather was in charge of the cathedral. So that's it. It's very fine inside. There's lots of stained glass windows, um, and he's it's, it's got some of the medieval books, which are wonderfully illustrated. So I'll show you a model of the uh, the cathedral here. Um, so it was extensively reworked through the centuries. In 1612, um, King James I came here and he, he did something like £2,000 to rebuild it, but not all the money was forthcoming. The English Civil War came and the money dried up. So in the 19th century, it was rebuilt a lot. Um, a local peer, Lord Grimthorpe, he ordered a lot of it to be rebuilt, and, um, and indeed it was. So the people of St Albans are Albanians, not Albanians, even though it's spelled exactly the same way. So you'll see, here's a symbol of St Albans, this gold cross on a blue field, a saltire. What do you pronounce it? Saltire. I'm always unsure. So it's a town of 57,000 people. I suppose one ought to say cathedral, really, since it's got this. But um, so they were all calling it St Albans Abbey. And then in the late 19th century, I think it's 1877, it became a cathedral again, and the Church of England, which had taken it over, they appointed a bishop here. So there's the Bishop of St Albans, and one of them, Robert Runcie, who was later elevated to the See of Canterbury, which is to say he was the Archbishop of Canterbury, and he, was, he held that office in 1981. Indeed, he was the one who married Lady Diana, Diana Spencer to Prince Charles. And then you can see some notable ecclesiastics um, are being granted their eternal rest right here in the churchyard. So you're seeing more of the stone, what it's like, some of the red brick and some of the local rough-hewn flint stuck together with some sort of mortar, or is it even concrete? Um, anyway, that's just a little bit about it. So there must have been a school attached to the cathedral, and then St Albans School, as we know, was founded some time later, and I'll show you that a bit later. Ah, so looking up this away, can you see the flag fluttering in the background? I can see it with the naked eye. For some reason, one can't see quite so far um, when, when looking on the screen. And one of these graves is Robert Runcie. Ah, oh, yes, that Archbishop of Canterbury, the guy who, f I think he's an Old Etonian, he's the guy who fought in, in, in the um, Second World War. The last Archbishop of Canterbury actually killed someone. He killed a German soldier in battle. Here he is with his good wife. Woo! Okay, so his, his wife was alive when I, was, when I spent some time in St Albans. I didn't realise that. Now, uh, anything else that you might wish to know about uh, St Albans Cathedral? Well, do go in. Under ordinary circumstances, obviously, it's open to the public. It's free of charge. So although it's gigantic, it's not the most ornate or magnificent cathedral, even by the standards of the British Isles, because a cathedral in these parts looks like a barn compared to a cathedral in France, Italy, Germany, Spain, or anywhere like that. So yeah, so that's enough. Um, and nearby there's a street called Fishpool Street because of course the monks couldn't talk, partake of flesh a Friday. So they had to um, uh, supplement it with, with, with eggs or fish if they wanted protein. Um, so fish didn't count as flesh. So there was indeed a pond at the foot of the hill that was um, teeming with fish for them. Uh, is there anything else you might wish to know? <clears throat> Probably not, yeah. So the, as I say, the 1880 rebuilding of this um, west door met with mixed reviews. Um, uh, Sir George Gilbert Scott, when he's a relatively young architect, he was commissioned um, for this project, so you can blame him, of it, him for it if it's not to your taste. So I've come almost full circle now to where this video started. At the moment, I'll just very briefly show you where St Albans School is, and you'll see what it's like. Yeah, so that's that's the that's the uh, west door of the cathedral again. Okay, so St Albans School, um, and some of it is part of the original Abbey Gateway, and there was a school then it was closed down with the Abbey, <coughs> refounded some time later. That is St Albans School, which is just across the way from the cathedral.
a bit of it's the Abbey Gateway, which which is which is um, original. So that's this incredibly historic city of St Albans, known as Verulamium to the ancient Romans, because it sits astride the river Ver. And indeed, the Earl of Verulam is um, what the local worthy, the Duke of St Albans, is descended from a natural son of uh, of Charles II, uh, as in born with one of the king's mistresses. So, but the Earl of Verulam and the Duke of St Albans are not the same person. Right, I shall switch it off now. Toodle pip.